Okay, let's be honest here, arrow checking and arrow handling in Golang sucks. Especially if you want to propagate errors to functions. However, there are some utility or helper functions that you can leverage to kind of reduce these redundant error checks. And that's why in this video we are going to implement our own must function and we are going to make use of some generics here, so it should be quite fun. Now, generally, it is important to note that this must function is kind of a common convention, especially also in the Golang codebase. So this must pattern is also used in a text template module of the official Golang codebase. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages, but I'm going to tell you these in a minute here. Let's just implement our own must function. Okay, so let's just first demonstrate here what we actually want to reduce, right? Because I think it's quite clear that in Golang itself, this kind of error checking where you always have the same thing, like if error is not equal to nil, and then you do some logging, you return, or you might panic as well, right? Which in the end stops the program entirely. So be aware of that, because we are going to make use of this panic within our must function. So a good example would be to just have like a regex, right? Where you, we want to basically pass a regex. However, this regex is invalid. So we're going to make use of the official regex module here of Golang. And then there are like two functions, right? We have must compile and a compile function. Now we are going to make use of the compile function because we want to handle the error separately. Now, as you can see here, the compile and must compile are two different functions. And the reason is that this must compile function basically handles the error, right? And you will see this all over Golang with this kind of must prefix, right? This is the must pattern in Golang. Now, basically what must compile does here, it tries to compile, right? And then basically it handles the errors for us. So we don't need to handle the error separately. Now, this compile function returns an error in the end. And we are going to make use of the compile function here. So I do recommend whenever you want, obviously, to pass regex, right? Where you kind of expect that this pattern or this regex is valid. I recommend to use the must compile function because it's kind of redundant, right? If you want to really compile a regex that should be valid, then you just have to use must compile and must compile handles the error for you, right? However, we are going to make use of compile and let's just define here an invalid regex which is just an opening square bracket. Now, as I already told you, this compile function returns the maybe valid regex, but also an error, right? So we are going to kind of check the error. Now you will see this pattern in Golang a lot where you have two return values, the maybe valid return value, right? Which will be filled like a string, a regex, uh, open file. And then the second value of the return tuple is the error, right? And what we're going to do here is pretty conventional as well. We are just going to say if error is not equal to nil, and then we are going to handle the error through logging using the log package, a custom logger, or maybe to just panic, right? And then let's just, for demonstration purposes, print the regex here. Now, if you run the project, what we obviously see is a passing regex error, right? Because we are missing a closing square bracket, and this is obviously intentional. So I'll actually show you in a minute here another example, which is quite ugly as well. But for now, let's just try to reduce this error check here, right? And we are going to create our own must function, right? So let's create this must function here. We say must, then we make use of generics by defining these square brackets. And then we say T any, right? In the end, any is just interface, right? This is it. Any is just in type alias here. And I will probably make a separate video just for generics because it's quite important, but also not important because maybe you will not really use generics at all in your code base. All right, so we say this is any, like I said, and then the must function takes in two function parameters. The first one is just the value, which is of type T. And the second one is an error. And in the end, it just returns T. Right? So we kind of expect two parameters, the expected value, right? Or the valid value kind of, and then the possible error. And in the end, we will just return X here again. Now in this function, we will now handle the error. So we say if error is not equal to nil, and then we can make use, like I said before, we can make use of the fatal F functionality here, 
right? But we can also make use of just panic and then error. Now this function is quite limited as well. The reason for that is because obviously there are different ways to handle the error, right? So you might panic, but maybe you will not really want to panic and you only want to lock the error because panicking in the end just terminates the whole program and the whole application. So we might be really careful with this program here and this must function because in the end this panics and this just closes and terminates your whole application. All right, nevertheless, let's just go ahead into our main function and what we can do now without this really nasty error check here, we can just say R, right? And then we say must and that's it, right? No real error check whatsoever. We just kind of panic whenever this compilation here is wrong for our regex. However, when it's like complete and when the regex is valid, we just return the valid regex, right? And in the end, we just print it. So if we run this project now, we see the same error. So let's just create a valid regex here. Let's just say maybe one, two, three. And if we run this program now, obviously we see our valid regex. So this must function is really, really nice because you can make use of it whenever you want to initialize or test specific functionality that returns an error in the end, right? But you want or you need to panic in the end whenever this kind of error occurs. Now, another advantage, which I think is pretty clear here, and I will show you actually a second example that makes use of this must function, and it will reduce the error checking functionality or the error checks a lot. But I think it should be clear that this reduces the boilerplate code as well, right? With all these unnecessary or kind of necessary and redundant error checks. All right, so let's have a quick, maybe more complex example here. And what we want to do is we want to copy a file right now. File handling is really special in Go because there are a lot of errors, especially when you want to open a file, when you want to read a file and all that fancy stuff. So maybe we can leverage the must function here. So let's just create this example. Let's have a source, right? It doesn't really matter if this path exists, right? We are just focusing here on the usage of the must function. And what we say is just template.txt maybe. And then we also have a destination and we want to copy the template.txt file into maybe out slash template.txt. Right, so how you would normally copy a file in Golang would be to just open the source file, right? And we can obviously do this by saying os.open and then we say source. Right? And the open function returns a possible file pointer and an error. So we say R error, right? And then we do this check here again, if error is not equal to null, maybe we want to panic, maybe we want to log something to the console or to a file or whatever it is, right? We're just going to keep it simple here and just always panic. Obviously, like I said, in this whole video, you should be really careful whenever you panic. And then in the end, we might close the file again. Now close can also return an error. We are not going to take care of that because we want to just close the file, right? Now then maybe we create the destination file because it could not exist, right? So we say os.create and then we say destination. Now obviously create returns an error as well. So we check again if error is not equal to null, panic error. <laughs> then obviously we need to close this created file as well whenever it is created and in the end we just make use of this syntactical sugar here and we say copy and then we say the destination is w and the source is r right and if the error is not equal to nil we panic again and then maybe in the end we always want to gracefully close the writer file right so we say if error is equal to w.close error not equal to nil, panic error. So hopefully this was not confusing for you. I think it's a lot of unnecessary code, right? Because we do a lot of error checks here. Obviously they are all necessary, but it just takes too much time to first off write them out, right? And second of all, it kind of makes your code base just much bigger than necessary. And there are a lot of languages that just do this kind of error checking much better. For example, Rust, where you just have this kind of question mark 
right? And you can propagate the error to the function and you can bubble the error up basically. And by the way, if you're interested in error handling in Rust, I have also made a video here. So feel free to check out this video and just compare these two like error handling concepts, right? Because you will see a lot of positive things specifically in Rust compared to Golang. All right, so in the end, we do have this large ugly error checking thing going on here, right? Just for copying a file. And let's just reduce these error checks by leveraging the must function. So what we can do is basically just kind of remove these error checks entirely, right? So we remove this, then we remove the error here and we say must, right? So this is quite handy here. Then again, we remove this error here, remove this error here, and then we say must here. And then we can also do the same thing with this code. We just say must io.copy w and r, right? Because it's in the end the same thing because copy returns a kind of successful result and a possible error. So this works with our must function as well. So we can remove this logic here as well. And now the most tedious thing as well in Golang is that it cannot always return a kind of valid value, right? It can just maybe return the error, like here. And obviously the really bad part is that we cannot make use of the must function in the end, right? Because must takes in two parameters, x and error, and we do not have x in this code. So what we can do here is maybe create another function, right? Let's just maybe copy this must function without the generics and without any return error. And then we call this function maybe check error, right? And in the end, it is a simple check error function, right? And in the end, we can just say check error and then we say w.close, right? And we can remove this and there we go. We kind of reduced the code by a lot, right? And now it's obviously also much more cleaner than the previous version, at least I think, without this kind of really redundant error checking. Now things will get a bit more complicated or kind of impossible whenever we want to extract this functionality to a function, right? So let's just say that we have a function called copy file and we do expect two parameters with the source and destination, which both are strings, and in the end, this could return an error, right? Because we want to propagate the error or we want to bubble up the error to the function itself so that the developer or the user of this function can handle the error, right? So we don't have to take care of that. Now we cannot really leverage the must function in here, which is really ugly. And that's why this kind of must pattern, so must compile instead of compile, exists in Golang. Right, so what we could do here, we just say error, right? And then we can kind of copy the logic into here. Now, like I said before, we just have to refactor this code, right? We just have to kind of remove the must function and handle error here. So if error is not equal to nil, we have to return it, right? And the same thing goes on for our create, copy and close. So that in the end, we have this huge function again. Now, and especially for copying a file, this must function doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Especially if you have like a library that you need to maintain and you need to propagate this error. Because obviously for copying a file, when you want to open the source, right? This open file actually could not exist, right? And that's why you do not want to panic because maybe you really want to handle this error gracefully and you do not want to terminate your whole application or your whole server, right? So leveraging the must function for this program or for this copy file function is not really applicable. So what I can really suggest here to use this must function for is whenever you want to initialize things and you kind of expect that for instance, like in our regex example, that you expect that this regex actually compiles, right? So if you have like user input, obviously you do not really want to leverage the must function. Cause like another downside of the must function is specifically this must function is that it panics the program, right? So it terminates the whole application. So I think the must function is really useful, especially for this 
initialization or testing logic. But be really careful whenever you want to use it. Oh, and by the way, if you're curious about the limitations that Golang offers for enums, then I highly recommend watching this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and bye-bye.